I hope you guys are doing well. We are at the end of my Blender Interior Scene course. Um, I'm going to be finishing off the render, doing the final render, and then doing the post-production today. So let's jump into it. Alright, so starting out, the HDRI that I used is one from PG Skies. It's the 1714 um, HD, HDRI. Um, I find PG Skies is great. They have really, really good consistent quality when it comes to their HD, HDRIs. And um, yeah, I've got a few that I just use a lot. I've got the 1714, the 1101, and the 817. Those are the daytime ones. And then the nighttime ones are just the 1957. <laughs> Sounds like a year. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of um, that's the one I went with um, when it comes to the HDRI, and then I just kind of went around through the process of rotating it around. Um, you can see I kind of started to document that, just coming up with a few different options um, when it comes to the directionality of the light, because that's super important and it affects how you read an image. So ultimately, I. I like this, um, you know, this this view here, um, and yeah. So uh, the only other change really from last episode is I've changed this material slightly just to kind of be a little bit more monotone, a little bit more um, consistent with the rest of the um, the theme of this uh, of this material palette. Um, the only other thing that I'm noticing right now, which I might just quickly change while we're here, is you can kind of see, if this doesn't crash, um, you can see the um, horizon level of this HDRI. And it's, I mean, I feel, I, I definitely notice it. So that's something that I want to quickly look at fixing. I think the easiest option is to just put a tree there in the, in the background. Um, so I've off to the side here just for the sake of you guys being able to see everything. Um, I've got a few a few trees surrounding this scene, which you can kind of see here. So the camera view is basically looking through here, and we've got a we've got pretty much a, a doorway window through there, and then there's a a tree which is blocking a majority of the light there. Um, but in this window reflection that you see here, we're actually seeing, uh, I guess, the, the HDRI behind. So hopefully this doesn't crash. I'm going to quickly duplicate this tree and then put it over there. And then let's just play around with it. Ah, oh, bugger. It just crashed. Um, you, guys are <laughs> you guys are seeing a sneak peek of another project I'm doing. Um, so stay tuned for that. Let's just quickly jump back into it. By the way, if something crashes, you can easily go up to File, uh, Recover, Autosave, and it's usually the, the first one there. Um, I find it's um, pretty good at, at um, quickly saving the work that you lost. So I'm going to quickly bef uh, I'm gonna quickly duplicate this again. These trees are huge, by the way, when it comes to like memory. They, they're from 3D Shaker. Uh, I freaking love their stuff. Um, yeah, they're good. Really, really good. All the other assets here are pretty much from Polygon materials and everything because it's just saves so much time. You don't have to set anything up. It just comes with all the cool little sliders and stuff to, to tweak the materials. Um, and then also you'll notice... Um, in general, with my stuff, I link stuff in. I haven't done it for these trees because I wanted to be able to edit the shape and the size. Um, but in general, I will do that. All right, guys, we're back one more time. Just before we click render, um, I've just quickly done a few changes. I've added a tree just to block those highlights out on the left-hand side of the image. I've also just lightened up this interior just a tad with um, turning on these lights and then adding um, a light in the splash bag. So I think from a value point of view, this works a little bit better. Um, and just before getting into Photoshop and I guess clicking render, I wanted to show you guys my settings for exporting render. I don't use no noise threshold. I don't denoise. 
I do generally around 2,000 samples um, if I'm doing a 1920 by 1080 render. Um, you want to pay particular attention around the gamma when you're exporting. If you're doing an interior scene, it pays to do maybe 1 to 1.2. And if you're doing exterior, you could go down to 0.8 depending on the intensity of the shadows and the values. It's a complicated subject, but just make sure that you're getting a good, you know, you're using a good look, um, high contrast or something like that. You can play around. It totally depends on your scene. So the reason why I don't denoise, I uh, use the, I guess the denoiser on the graphics card is because I actually do that in the compositor afterwards. So if we come over to the compositing tab here, you'll notice I've got this denoising node, which plugs into the um, composite. So to get these render layers out, we want to go down to our passes and we want to turn on denoising data. And then that'll bring up the denoising normal, albedo and depth. And we want to plug those into here and then have that output as the composite. So that's pretty much it. And I just find using this denoising node, it just has a little bit of a, um, a better result and it's not as destructive. So let's let's render this out um, and I'll see you guys in Photoshop very shortly. All right guys, so this is just finished rendering. What I'm gonna be doing um, is just going up to the image, save as, I'm gonna come across to TIFF. I'm gonna save it as a 16-bit TIFF. So we just dragged this into Photoshop and I think it's looking pretty good. My first step that I take is I'm gonna convert it to a smart object go up to filter and I'm going to use camera raw filter and essentially the camera raw filter is uh, very similar to Lightroom um, it's just inbuilt into Photoshop so I'm going to start out with going into black and white mode um, if you don't have that you can enable color filter uh, on if you're using Windows and then go control Windows C to change it to black and white um, and then we're just going to get an idea on what the values are kind of looking like um, just so that we can create something that's a little bit punchy. I'm going to start out just going up to the auto settings because I find that's just a good point of reference to start from. And I'm just going to play around with the whites, the blacks, the shadows just to create almost as if it, the final image was going to be black and white just so that we can kind of create a bit of visual interest. Make sure to zoom in and out just to get an idea right from a distance how it looks and then close up as well. It's almost it's almost ideal to start further back and an, if it reads well as an image further back, then you can go a little bit further closer. So I think that's generally quite good. I'm going to go out of black and white mode. Um, and something that I normally do is I'm going to reduce the saturation quite a lot and then increase the vibrance and it's just a nice touch. It kind of plays with the color quite nicely. I'm going to go across to the color mixer. We've got hue, saturation and luminance. Starting out in the um, probably the saturation panel, I'm going to just bring that orange down a tiny bit just because we don't want it to be too overpowering it is a kind of a monotone um, is it analogous color palette where kind of all the colors are very um, unified but we also want to make sure that it's not too overpowering so when you're doing an analogous color palette you can kind of play more with subtlety when you're doing a complementary color palette, you can really boost the the saturation because it, it works really well. So if we come across to the hue panel, uh, we want to make sure that um, all the hues are unified and working well. So the yellows should be more in the orange direction rather than the green direction. I think that that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the greens generally... It depends on if there are any greens in the scene to begin with, but there actually aren't any. Blues, you can kind of see down here. 
there's a significant kind of uh, bit of blue there and then we're probably going to take care of that by just bringing the saturation of the blue down and the purple and magenta so purple and magenta generally i do not like having those in the render in any render i do because it's just not a nice color when it comes to working with natural light it's generally just not not great so i'm going to bring the purple across to the more purple direction and you can see how that kind of subtly it, it's very contrast if you go blue but if you go across to purple it kind of blends it in a little bit more so it's starting to become quite unified which is good um, and you'll get a you'll get a taste of what you like when it comes to colors because everyone's got a different taste um, mine's definitely evolved over time and the last panel is the luminance panel you want to be very careful with this one a little bit can uh, it's like salt when you cook like a little bit makes a big difference but you don't want to go you know too far but essentially it, it brightens or darkens each color individually so it's super powerful um, I think that's that's looking quite good um, color grading let's go up to the curve panel and we're gonna lift these blacks up slightly just to crush it's called crushing the blacks and then we're gonna bring we're gonna create another point and bring that down in the middle we're gonna bring it up slightly and the highlights we're just gonna bring it up a little bit more and then right on the whites we're gonna bring that down this is called a s curve and it's just a basic curve that creates a bit of um, a bit of contrast and this is very similar to using contrast or your whiteness uh, your whites your blacks your highlights your shadows so all of these these methods kind of affect each other but they're all different in their own way so it can be quite confusing initially learning this kind of thing so maybe start out maybe maybe don't do this this part for now you could maybe just go with the the basic kind of panel here um, but if you want uh, if you want to create a bit of interest in the blacks you can just like raise up the blacks and then lower the whites and that just creates a little bit of interest when it comes to your your tones um, because in reality nothing in nature is a hundred hundred percent black or white it's all a different range so that just helps to make it a little bit more natural i'm just going to bring these shadows down now i think that's some quite nice contrast the basic panel i'm just going to play around with this white balance but i think generally it's it's looking good it's pretty pretty spot on um, and then if we go to the detail panel don't be afraid to boost the sharpening up because it just makes a big difference color mixer we've done that color grading i don't really touch color grading optics we can add a little bit of vignette just on the corners but uh, i generally don't touch it there i actually do it in the effects panel um, so in geometry i usually just click auto it just kind of like straightens it up it's quite good and then let's just add a little bit of vignetting and then a little bit of grain you may be wondering about the grain because when you render you want to reduce grain but i like to add just a little bit afterwards and that just kind of creates a nice photography look it's a little bit more natural nothing is perfectly denoised when you're taking a photo there's always going to be grain so it's just that little cream cream of the crop you know cherry on top that adds a little bit of um yeah flavor so i think that's pretty good you can kind of see before and after it's pretty pretty significant change actually so before you've got your kind of standard you know uh tone all the colors are you know as per what is what it is in blender the light is just based off the hdri but when we actually start working with colors and light you can direct the render into um, 
your own vision and your own taste and your own style. And post-production really is a fantastic way to um, develop a brand as a designer or as a 3D artist. You can do these subtle things to the colors or the light, uh, to the tone of the image, and that just develops a theme in your work. And it's just a nice way to create consistency. You know, if someone sees an image that you've posted, um, they may immediately know, hey, this is from this guy. Um, so, um, yeah, and, and you'll probably notice if you check out my Instagram, all my images have a similar theme. They may be a completely different time of day um, or different architecture, different design, different materials, but I feel like they have a similar similar vibe to them. And you don't have to really worry about this too much because as you edit your photos and produce your render uh, edit your renders and you know work on the 3d side of things you'll start to develop your own style as a artist um, and the theme and the vibe will come out naturally over time so just try to get inspiration from other people's work and photographers and whatever kind of um, area and art and design that you can and then just see where it develops from, see where your taste develops from. So I hope you guys have found this really useful. Um, I only put this out because I want to share my process and um, I really enjoy teaching. So um, I will see you guys next week. Make sure to like and sub because I've got some cool stuff coming out in the next few weeks and I don't want you to miss it. Cheers. See you later.